here's a problem about a boat moving across a river, and it's a chance to think about uh, reference frames and how to solve these problems. So we have a boat that travels at 3.3 meters per second across a river flowing at 0.2 meters per second, and the river is, that's a comma, the river is 5 meters wide. So we probably want to start by just kind of drawing it here. There's your river, and we'll say the boat's going to start, you know, down here somewhere and try to cross the river. So we've got to think about what these uh, words mean. Remember, the problem is it's always context. So whenever you say a boat travels at a certain speed, it always means with respect to the water. With respect to water. Because the boat travels in the water. So if we were going to give these things names, these vectors names, like we did in class when we talked about, talked about transformations, we'd say, OK, the boat is just going to take off like this. And we'll call that the velocity of the boat in the water's reference frame. The other velocity we have is uh, 0.2 meters per second. That's the water flowing. And we didn't say, but the water's going to flow down the river. So perpendicular to the direction the boat is trying to go across, the water flows down. So we could also draw a vector like that. We can label that the velocity of the water. But in what frame is the water? If we say the water is flowing, that's relative to somebody here on the ground, or on the land, or the, the shore. So I'll call it L for land. That's the velocity of the water in the land frame. So let's see what question. I forgot what the question was. Uh, the, the, question, the first question we're going to ask, we're going to ask a few questions, is A, uh, the first question is, how far does the boat actually travel if it attempts to do this? How far does the boat travel? Because you can see what's going to happen just intuitively. It's going to try to go straight across. It's actually going to get swept by the river. It's going to kind of move sort of at an angle like that. So it's not going to just go five meters. It's going to go a little bit farther. OK, so there's really two ways to do this. Um, the first way you can kind of do without really even thinking about relative frames. You can first, the way you can do it is just use your kinematics. You could say there's x motion, and there's y motion, and they're independent. And in this case, there's not even any acceleration. So you say, OK, what was the question? How far does it travel? So it seems like we're going to need both distances from the x and the y kinematics. We're going to need them both. Now, the distance in the y, we already have. We have the 5. We really just need to know if it goes 5 this way and it gets swept that way, we're going to combine these two things to get the total distance d. That's the question. And we already have the 5. So we just need to know how far does it get swept this way. Well, we know the velocity that way. It's 0.2 meters per second. We just need to know the time. All right, so let's see. Kinematics, we have y. x equals x initial. We're going to call this the origin. So there's no x initial. x naught plus vxt. Right, so that's 0. Plus vx, we know, 0.2. But we don't know time. So this is a case where we are solving the x kinematics, but we have to go back and look at the y kinematics to get something we're missing, the time. So let's go back to y and say, well, y final was, it went 5 meters. y initial, it started at the origin, plus 0.3 meters per second times time. So we can actually figure out, based on the y motion, how long it took for it to cross the river. It took 5 over 0.3 which is 16.6666, so 16 2 thirds. So the time it took was 16.67 seconds. So now the y gave us the time, so we go back and we plug that in here. So 16.666 seconds, etc., gives us an x position, or an x displacement of 3.33. Um, uh, Wait, I'm sorry, it is what is yeah, six points and then I think okay, I just those out. Three point three three meters, right? Point five five times yeah, three point three three meters. So we don't went five this way; it went three point three three that way. So then we just say d equals the square root of twenty five plus three point three three squared Pythagorean theorem of that thing to get six meters. 
And that is the answer. It goes six meters in the reference frame of someone watching it from the ground. Often a question, that's what they mean. If you, hopefully a good question will say it clearly. I don't write full questions on these boards. But hopefully a question would say, in the reference frame of the ground, how far did the boat travel? There's a second way to get this one. So you could do straight kinematics, or you could do it a little bit more with reference frames. You could think this way and say, well, I remember that if I want to know how fast the boat is going in the ground frame or the land frame, what I was told to do is say velocity of the boat in the land to the velocity of the boat in some frame plus the velocity of that some frame in the land. In this case, the one you're missing is the water, of course. So it's the velocity of the boat in the water plus the velocity of the water in the land. And those are the two you were given. Okay? They're right there. So what you could do is just say the velocity of the boat in the land frame is uh, you could just add these two like this, vector sum them, and here's the velocity of the boat in the land frame. And you could start doing kinematics, or you could realize all I really need is this angle. Once I know the angle it's actually moving, then I just do geometry. Then I know it went five this way at some angle. What's the hypotenuse? So you actually don't have to do kinematics. We don't have to write this out as something with I had and J had and all that stuff. That's kind of what we did here. So let's look at that then. So what is that angle? Um, so we have this triangle then. We went 0.3 here, we've got something smaller, 0.2 here, and theta is there. And we know that the actual the velocity of the boat in the land frame, we're not even calculating, we're just getting the angle. So it's really just the tangent of opposite and adjacent. Right? So this is hypotenuse, this is opposite, this is adjacent. So then the tangent of theta is 0.2 over 0.3. 3, so the thing that comes out to be it's 33.7 degrees. So the boat is actually moving at 33.7 degrees. So now we just do our uh, trigonometry. The river is 5 meters wide. It's going at 33.7 degrees. So again, you got to be really good at Sokotoa here. <coughs> This is the opposite to that angle. This is the adjacent. This is the hypotenuse. <clears throat> we want the hypotenuse, so we say the cosine of the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is adjacent phi over the hypotenuse. We'll call it D, because that's really what we're looking for. So D, in this case, is phi over the cosine of 33.7, or whatever it was. And you do all that, and guess what you get? You get 6 because that's the answer. Same thing we got here. Okay? So either one of those approaches is fine. I think they both have good insights. One's more kinematic, one is more geometry and relative motion. Uh, a second question that would be good to ask here, similar to things you will see, I think I can fit it in over there, is B, um, I think you could say, what angle did the boat take? What, or I'll say, what direction would the boat take to move perpendicular to the shore in the land frame? Okay, so we describe the case where the boat thinks it's going perpendicular, and the water is just pushing it to the side. But what if we wanted it to really do this? Here is the river, and we want it to really move like that. And by really move, we mean the velocity of the boat in the land frame. So I'm just going to go ahead and label it like that. Velocity of the boat in the land frame. But we know, the way we set this up, we know the velocity of the boat in the land, fr land frame is the sum of these two, okay? So we're not really allowed to change this one. That's the velocity of the water in the land frame. The boat can't change the direction of the water to pull this off. The boat's gonna have to change its own direction. 
So when we think about how these add up, we're stuck with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it here like that. Velocity of the water in the land frame. I drew it there because we know we're going to add this and this head to tail to make that because that's what it says to do here. Right? This plus this is that. A plus B. So clearly the only thing that the boat could do is to turn its 0.3 meters per second that way. The velocity of the boat in the water frame. So if you want that angle, it's straightforward. It's another right triangle. This is your right triangle because the water is going perpendicular uh, to the shore there. So you have a right triangle with uh, 0.3 here and 0.2 there. And there's theta. And again, this is another case where it's not just tangent. you got to look. This is the opposite to theta, and this is the hypotenuse. So really, this is a case where you have sine theta. It's the opposite 0.2 over the hypotenuse 0.3. Now, why isn't it just tangent? Angles are always uniform tangent. No, not always. That's always true when you have a trajectory and you're talking about the angle relative to uh, the x-axis and everything. Here, this is sort of a different problem. Whereas the direction, we haven't even really set up x and y coordinates. So we're just having to actually use SOHCAHTOA to get these angles. In the end, you get uh, 42 degrees. Theta equals 42 degrees. And then you'd want to say something specific like, west of north, or you'd want to show it in the drawing right here, this degrees, 42 degrees to the left of the vertical or something like that. The problem would make it clear how to, how to answer. And if you're worried these aren't the same, it's because these are different problems. Keep in mind, you know, there might be multiple parts of a problem and they may not be asking about the same set of circumstances. This was the case where it was being swept aside by the water. This is the case where it's turning its direction into the water to achieve an actual vertical or a perpendicular.